How can one born in the pit of life's struggles see past their own existence? When you have naught but a brass penny to your name, what truth can you know save hunger or the desire to survive? Power breeds malfeasance. Your kings and queens squander lives like pawns on a chessboard. It is no wonder the darkness fills your heart so. Soon nothing will exist without the taint spreading like a wildfire. Most that can see it ignore it, they shut it in a box in the mind. But no box is closed forever. The mantle has fallen to me to right the world's wrongs. No other will combat it. No other will see it done. The pyramid of society must be rebuilt, brick by brick, stone by stone. But first, we must knock it all down. I am sorry for what is to come. But before rebirth, there must be death. It's been some time now since Ten Blades took me arm. Definite the archer is dead. Most days after I curse the gods, but it seems they aren't done with me yet. Zav never gave up on me either. There on that tower I discovered that the strength in the archery was never in me arm but in me eye, and purpose sharpens me aim. Knives fly not as far as arrows, but more swiftly, one after another. So if you be thinking that Dev ain't what she used to be, well you'll be right. I'm deadlier than I ever was. After I followed Zavis to where fate deemed we were most needed, she took us straight to our flame-haired doctor, still on the run from that Justicar, his men closing in fast. What is it about Oiri that drives a man to send two trained witchers to fetch her? And what did Dryden really intend? Those questions left me uneasy ever since. This little girl, she's important in a way that I can't see clear. More on that, she's my friend, and I belong here, with Zav standing between her and whatever danger lies ahead. There's a part of me that regrets more than just the decisions I made that brought me here to this place in time. The storm keeping us from the seas felt like a sign, like I'd made yet another mistake by not leaving with Dryden when he offered. I was so sure Zavis and Devnet would agree with my logic. We had to stick together, the four of us. But I found myself torn once again between decisions that would affect more than just my own life. I lost my family because of my decisions. My sister nearly lost her life because of me. She lost her other eye. Zavis and Devnet had to go on the run, and when I last saw them again, Devnet lost her arm. I dragged Dryden back into my mess, and then I just abandoned him after he saved my life. <laughs> A debt repaid. The Justicar still comes for me. I'm constantly faced with the decision to run or fight, but I can't do it alone. I'm weak. My uses with my skills as a doctor. Perhaps it's time I learn how to fight. All I ever wanted was a quiet life, traveling, enjoying the world. Yet nothing ever goes the way we want, does it? If it did, that happiness would fade. Nice strife to compare it to. In the last few months, I've seen more combat than I have in decades at a time. I never wanted to be a good killer. I enjoy a good brawl as much as the next dwarf, but I, I just wanted to sleep with beautiful women, play music, entertain, and get paid for it. Yet, here I am, travelling from one murder to the next, justified their name, yet life keeps on moving. It takes a great deal of running just to stay in place, so I run and run, and despite it all, I'm still happy. I don't know if that makes me broken or just odd. Perhaps so much bad makes the good all the brighter. Perhaps I should have just given up off the get-go. <laughs> nay, nay, the lassie did kill me if I stopped making use of me silver tongue. All I know now is that I want to be happy and make others happy too. I suppose maybe these hands can bring folks happiness. Even if clenched into fists. Battered, bruised, bloodied, but not broken. That is where Jute finds himself currently. 
a half-elf that never fit in. He struck out early in life to forge his own destiny. He joined a mercenary company and slowly over the years rose through the ranks, becoming the captain of the Black Company. Through tactical skill and naked ambition, the coffers of the company grew, and it wasn't until he made a fateful decision and didn't heed his own advice that the Black Company was destroyed. Now alone, he sets off on his own to rebuild the Black Company. Yeah. All right. Anybody hear any music? No. No. <laughs> yeah. Just questioning the fact that someone rolled a Kraken punch. That's that is concerning. <laughs> no, wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. There we there go. go. There we go. Cool. Okay, okay. Um, so this is episode 12 of No Peace Until Death, season 2, I believe. Um... And we're just going to get started. Uh, if you're watching, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Also, who I have with us today is Slip Plan, DevNet, Walter Peck Plan, Jute, Aki Plan, Zavis, and Effie Plan, Ori. And I am MPC in Dryden. It didn't take long to find a wagon. Jude had rode off and quickly procured one, brought it back to your camping spot where you had used it to move Zavis and put him in the wagon and head north. Um, it had been a slow, slow day. It was getting close to dusk now as you see smoke billowing from the town that you had known to be on the coast. You see the water in the distance behind it and you watch it from afar, perhaps a mile away. Go ahead and let me know what you're up to and just open it up for roleplay right here. Uh, Dev's been checking in on Zavis um, pretty frequently. Um, obviously frustrated that um, there's not a whole lot she can do. When Jute got back with the wagon, she was so relieved she really didn't ask any questions about it. Um, now that they're walking along, she uh, turns to him and says, So, uh, where did this wagon come from anyway? Jute gives a kind of playful smile and a smug sense of satisfaction and looks her, oh, don't you, don't you worry about that. I can't say I'm too worried about it one way or the other. Uh, glad that it, none of us is having to carry this fella. He's it was lying around. <laughs> yeah, I, uh. I would not be volunteering. Dryden, he, he looks like a, a man well-suited for the job of Pat. I don't think he'd do that. Hey, Zavis lays in the back of the cart, uh, head propped up a bit on some kind of sack. He hasn't checked, don't bother to check what it's filled with. Uh, as he kind of leans a bit up a bit more, getting his back up against the, the wood of the cart. Hey, I'm glad no one has to carry me. I don't think Dryden would want it anyway. They're sounding better than last night, that's for sure. Hey, hey, I drink enough water to keep the hangover at bay, so. Well, perhaps in, in about a, a few days, you'll be up on your feet and ready to punch another. Hey, hey hopefully. 
Although it does kind of still burn when I eat. It's in, in the pleasant. I think it'll be a way before that goes away. Could be Probably worse if so. it burn. Could burn when you pee. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it could. I'm lucky enough to uh, work with high class enough lasses that I haven't any, any encountered that yet. Dev kind of raises her eye, skeptic eyebrows skeptically, but shrugs. Uh, sights down the road. I'm hoping that in a few days we'll be on a ship. I oh, think uh, town should be only a few more miles up ahead. Hopefully Good. it's not a Veron. Yeah, you can clearly see the town about a mile away. You see smoke billowing up from it. Dryden has been um, riding ahead of you a little bit, and he comes cantering back. I should go scout this. You should stay here. Um, all right, then uh, don't say anything to anyone about the attack if it hasn't happened yet. Don't want to drive the prices up. Yes. You think it'll happen? She shrugs. I don't see why it wouldn't. We'll have to be careful. I do want to... I mean, we'll see. Just be careful, Dry. He looks in the wagon at Zavis. I am always careful. And <laughs> he turns and kind of, as he does, you see the burn marks on the side of his face. And... Iri, Iri does the, the staple white girl lip perk. <laughs> he gives everyone a quick look except Jute and just kicks uh, the side of his horse and disappears closer um, to the town uh, until you can't really make out his figure anymore. Ju kind of looks over to Irie and Dev and Zavis and kind of shrugs. He seems very charming. Oh, oh hey. Mm. Nice seen the worst of it. It's his uh, strong point, I'd say. <laughs> well, hopefully all goes well. I'd be happy to be on the sea, I suppose. Compared to how this has been. I have to admit, I am kind of concerned that perhaps we're still walking into what has been told to us. I, I'd like to think that perhaps Ayla was full of shite, but... Nay, no, no, she seemed too mad to be full of shite. <clears throat> well, whether she was telling the truth or not, there's no reason for us to necessarily go getting involved in it, especially not now. Oh, well, I don't I definitely don't want to get involved, but I don't want to go in blind like I have in the past. I do want to see any more bloodshed across the north, but, uh, well, I think I'm quite happy to stay back at Skilliga for a bit and uh, assess the situation from there. Do you think the storms have passed overseas? Uh, does it look like it has? Uh, it looks, it looks clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seems well enough. Hopefully it stays that way. Hey, ships will be coming in. Mm. Which means plenty of ships going out later. Hey. Well, let's hope we don't have to wait for days this time. I shouldn't need, shouldn't have to. Just a little bit of luck is all we need. You think we got enough uh, money for the fire? If we got, I had did a witch uh, She shakes her head. 
we got a bit put by making, uh, well, I've been on a ship enough times that I can probably do some work as a hand. One hand. <laughs> right. Well, if nothing else, uh, given the whole shit going on, I doubt people would mind a good song. Uh, so perhaps you can raise some coin that way. She kind of reaches back with her hand and uh, pats um, the what's obviously two swords, but they're very uh, carefully wrapped in cloth on her back. I do have something I can trade if it comes to that. And what might that be? Uh, she looks around surreptitiously, although they're all alone here on this road. And she uh, stops for a minute, stops the wagon, and uh, takes them out. She unrolls them. She says, I've got uh, one of these silver swords already. Uh, and I've got another witcher's blade and a silver sword. And we killed a couple witchers back and, uh, well, they're finely made, but recognizable. What were you doing, killing Witcher? <laughs> what do you think? Staying I don't think alive. People... <laughs> I don't they think people go out looking to kill a Witcher. Well, I mean, aside from psychopaths. I, uh, not just a car or whatever he was. He sent some to fetch Oiri here and uh, she didn't seem keen on going. And they didn't take no for an answer. And why do witchers think you're so valuable, Irie? Irie shrugs her shoulders. Uh, it, honestly, I, I don't think that. I, well, I thought that it was perhaps that I was that it was just the premise, because I was running from an agreement, but. Um, you know, that letter uh, uh, suggests something else. Maybe some other conspiracy that I accidentally got wrapped up in. Who knows? Who cares? I care. My hide's at stake. Yours too. Everyone's here. Well, according to the letter, uh, the Lords of Verdon don't know who I am and don't want me. So I think that it's over. I think she doesn't look uh, convinced by her words. She she still kind of has a shrug to her shoulders. It's a mystery to be sure, but uh, not one that I think it, it's wise to go poking about at this time. Aye, it is odd. But once we're to Skellige, I hope all this will be here behind us. For a while, at least. And then what? You flee and run to some island? Then what? You don't think they might come after her? They think well, she's important enough to have two witchers? Maybe they her. don't know that we're going. To Skellige! Are you mad? <laughs> hey, no one go. invades Skellige. Anyone who's ever tried is... In all of history, no one successfully invaded Skellige. It'd be quite the entertainment. <laughs> uh, paying some uh, other clansmen somewhere maybe to kidnap her. Now I can see that happening, but direct assault? No. Uh, Skellige may not have much besides beauty and fish, <laughs> but we've got... Uh, the greatest defense that uh, this world knows. Aye, yeah, and the finest fighting pit around. It's been quite a while since I fought in the pit. As I'm healed up, that sounds quite quite nice, actually. <laughs> After the shit kicking I got last time, it is a bit of a stress relief. Oh, I think it's going to be a while before you're fit for the fighting pit. Hey, nonsense. I'm getting there already. How long of a travel is it over the waters? Uh, depends on the 
seas and then the winds and the currents. Uh, I don't know. How long does it usually take to... Uh, probably something like a week. Yeah. Around a week. Fairy kind of... It gives a, a slight grimace at that. Um, Zavis, I'm, I'm sure... By the time we get there, you'll be you'll be feeling all right, but not fully ready. <laughs> It'll be fine. Or are you feeling a lot better? And that's concerning. As soon as you start feeling better, you think you can do things that you can't. Oh, hey, hey I don't know. I'll try when the time comes. You in the distance, you see the Dryden riding back. There's. He's coming the same speed that he left. He just stops and says, The village is destroyed. But there oh, is a shit. ship in the harbor. Oh, really? Anyone left around to man it? He shrugs. I did not go in to find out. Did it look skeleton? I wouldn't even know what that is. It's a ship. Ah! Doesn't don't look like any shape. Doesn't. And what about those monstrosities? I saw nothing, but I do not believe they are all gone. Well, we don't have much else unless we want to wander on just to find another destroyed village. Ah, uh, we'd best hurry up. Uh, they may be only waiting to see what. Supplies they can scavenge from the town if they're alive at all. Aye, true. It's not near a bad idea, to be honest. Uh, well, let's just be cautious. Aye, of course. Still. I think the world is, without a sense of irony, I half expect it to be Haddam when we get there. <laughs> if it is, then... Uh... Well, he'll be in for the surprise of his life, too. Hey. Uh, probably the last surprise of his life, if it comes to that. Well, let's get one then. I'd be quite happy to be on the sea. Dryden considers something from his horse and says, When you left me, did you not have Mogot with you? Where is he? Ah, uh, he mm. was back at the other town, waiting in the inn. Probably dead. Ah, that muggled. I think he Sorry. probably managed to squirm his way out somehow. That man is slippery as a greased hog. Hey, about the size of one as well. Well, I mean, that'd be quite a rude to Og, wouldn't it? <laughs> he considers. If he did leave, he would quickly sell out the Ori as quick as possible. Right. Well, he's... Oh, I, didn't we kind of intimidate him? <laughs> no, I fear that the witcher's correct. Uh, that man, he's, uh, as hey. well as we intimidated him, it wouldn't take but one tough and with a knife to his throat to uh, get him to spill all of his guts. Or to uh, a coin. Wait, I find I distance and intimidation are on opposite sides. Right, well. just nods to that. Let's just get on, see what we can find in the village. Maybe some supplies, if nothing else. And hopefully that boat, well, I don't know. Well, hopefully so, and hopefully we don't have to worry about Mughalt double-crossing or whatever. <laughs> we will see. Dryden just turns and begins to ride towards the town slowly so the wagon can keep up. Well, Zavis, um, maybe for a change of pace, don't almost die this time. <laughs> I'll try. I'm already in the process, so... <laughs> almost is acceptable.
You head into the town. You see ruined buildings, some smoldering from fire. Clearly, whatever happened to the last town you're in likely happened here as well. You see dead bodies strewn about like pine needles falling from a tree. There's no rhyme or reason to it. They lay where they've fallen, more than likely. Some have clearly broken skulls or bones or their bodies are twisted in unnatural shapes lying on the ground as they were manhandled and broken by the monstrosities you had seen. Dev is going to approach some of the bodies, uh, particularly ones that look if one has armor or basically like they're not just completely impoverished peasants. Yeah, you find you can find some guard like they're wearing armor, probably guards. She'll come around closely and kind of circle the body and see if she sees any other footprints coming near, if the body looks rifled. She's basically trying to determine if someone's been through um, scavenging. No. Um, you find on the body all his gear or... Um, you know, his sword's laying by his side. His armor is badly dented, so dented in the chest that it's caved in his, um, the, or the dented breastplate's caved in his chest, more than likely. Uh, you find on his belt uh, some coins. Not not a whole lot, but clearly he has everything that he fell with. Oiri is going to check the the bodies and see if it's the, the exactly the same type of damage that they saw um, at the other. Yeah, as you check the bodies, it's a lot of blunt force trauma and um, just uh, that sort of thing. Um, cracked skulls, broken necks, broken arms, broken backs, um, arms ripped from their sockets, hung, uh, you know, uh, being um, attached only by the skin. Uh, terrible, vicious wounds, but certainly done by something not with a bladed, not with a weapon. Jude kind of kneels next to one of the broken bodies and runs a few fingers over the armor caved into his sternum and kind of looks up and wonders aloud, you know, who... Who has the power to unleash such monstrosities? Kind of looks to the group for any answer. I don't doubt that Karn the Fox, uh, judging from the description we had of him, would be able to. But why? Like enough. I, I don't understand what he hopes to gain. Fuck it. <sighs> Let's head toward the, toward the water. Uh, I don't see any sign that... Uh, People have been around here, at least, uh, going through the bodies, and that's something any sailor would do. Uh, I'm worried that Keep we might miss them if they're alive. Hey, Keep an eye out for anything useful. <laughs> God knows we need the coin. I, uh, um, these poor folk do. do. Do any of the bodies have coins on? Like, Yeah, you're able to collect in the short order probably 50 50 gold okay. somebody can throw that in their inventory if they like okay I'll do that because uh, Ayuri will scavenge for money other than that Dev will look for finely made weapons because sometimes they're worth more than loose coin mm. yeah all there's there. it's all pretty standard um, nothing that's going to be particularly um worthwhile you think okay while they're scavenging the bodies Jude's gonna look look for any signs of survivors not that he expects to find it not not in the not in the vicinity where you are no you don't see any uh, you see mostly this is kind of towards the north or I'm sorry uh, towards the south you've come from the south to the north and so uh, you kind of see more uh, bodies as you would go north, but you're kind of going um, west towards the coast is the way you're aiming. 
seems like probably people fled north away from these things. Let's so are the are the buildings burnt down? Some of them. It's just it's oh. just a general state of disarray. Some are completely fine. Some are burnt down. Some are damaged. That sort of thing. Ayuri doesn't feel comfortable going into those alone, so she'll, she'll stick with the group. But if if the group is keen on going in for more pillaging, I let's check the ship first. I just. I'm uneasy. If we get there and we see him, you know, Aye. a mile out on the water, we're going to feel foolish for lingering here. Indeed. That's if true. secure that first, then, uh, then do what we can to loot about if we need to. All right. Dryden just says, get her to the ship. These creatures we're... cannot swim. Well, that's good to know. Aye. Aye. Don't look like the swimming sort to me either. <laughs> oh, yeah, I could just imagine them flopping about in the water. I think they'd try to walk. <laughs> Dread nods. She will be safe on the islands for now. And he starts walking forward. You begin passing through a square and. Um, can you guys give me an awareness check? Ooh. What skill is Ant. that under? Boop. Thank you. So aware. I've been putting uh, points in here and there. Actually, I didn't last time. Never mind. It's still a two. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Everybody ha! hears just a bunch of noise from uh, your left and right around you just banging around crashing now does it sound like pillaging or does it sound like uh something stuck um sounds like things coming your way running into things yeah let's let's hurry i don't like the sound of that let's go let's get a move on <sighs> irie is going to um try and uh put an arrow into her crossbow while they're they're getting yeah you it doesn't take you long to see what's going on Dryden just pulls out his silver sword and looks to the rest of you and says get to the ship I will hold him off uh, Dev looks at Dryden like she's gonna argue but then she looks at Davis and nods Oiri you get those horses moving. And uh, she pulls out her knives, guarding the way as they jog toward the ship. Um, Oiri uh, is, of course, hesitant. One, uh, you know, <laughs> however many or two could not take on two when last she saw. So she's looking at Dryden. And while she understands he is a monster hunter, there's a slight bit of hesitation. And even uh, even with DevNet saying, Let, let's get going, um, she'll probably get to a point of some irritation with her not going. And then finally, she'll try to get the horses to, to go towards the coast. Do I need to do anything for that? Um, nah. Oh, yeah. Or he's trapped Jude. under the cart. <laughs> Jude, yeah. Jude, with his sword drawn, almost chastises her, yells at Irie for not getting the cart <laughs> moving. But once he, he sees her doing it, he bites his tongue and uh, kind of jogs along the cart in case any of the monsters uh, rush them. Yeah, you see Dryden kind of run out in front of you and he like makes a sign with his hand and you see there's this sparkling glow in front of these things and they walk begin to walk through it and they almost look like they're getting stuck and as you do that um you move or you're moving past him and he gives a look over his shoulder at the four of you as you pass by quickly um taking a turn and heading towards the docks um, leaving him there um, by himself
Dev gives a little salute with their knife that's in one hand. Can't believe he did that. He's a witcher, it's his job. We're able to into the ship. As <laughs> as they pass, um Oyuri will give Dryden a look uh, of concern um and also kind of pleading for him to not uh you know make this a sort of sacrificial thing if he can get that vibe. Yeah, he gives you the briefest of looks before you see him raise his sword and swing down at one of them as you um, turn the corner finally. Um, yeah. Yeah, Zava sits in the back of the car as he's kind of dragged along within it, uh, kind of watching over the whole thing as it goes on, keeping an eye out for any more of the creatures. Yeah, you easily, um, you don't see any other of the golems um, currently. Um, as your horse and wagon uh, reaches the docks, you see a ship out in the water. Does Dev recognize the kind of ship it is? Is it a long ship or is it just... It is, um, give me a, um, let's see. Crafting or something? I don't know. Uh, uh, my crafting sucks, but. Well, sailing's reflexes. I guess that's the <laughs> actual act Inte of Well, sailing. intelligence for recognizing a ship, I would think, though. Yeah, I would say okay. uh, deduction would be fine. There we go. Yeah, so I'll get a look over it as well, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a it's a actually um a skeleton ship. Hmm. Oh, Freya be praised. Uh, I wonder what the hell is he doing here though. Might have just come to hurt. trade. Uh get Iri, help Zav down. And Dev approaches get the dock. Iri is still nice. going to position herself to help Zavas. Uh, yeah, he sees make... you and actively climbs over the side, hopping down with a grunt. Zavas! <laughs> what? I, swing. I can move. You're gonna pull the stitches? <sighs> well, it feels like it, but they haven't yet, so I'm fine. And he kind of reaches in and kind of I will let you bleed. <laughs> Grabs whatever else is laying about, gets his pack over his shoulder. Another kind of slightly pained grunt as he starts walking towards the docks. Dev is kind of running toward the ship. Hail the ship! Are those my countrymen aboard? As you do that, um, you see somebody kind of peek over the rail. Um just looks kind of wide-eyed at you. Uh, it doesn't say anything. Drop the gangplank! That was follows after. Or any of those things me. out there? Any more of those monsters? Be worthy, there's a witch earth keeping them busy. Aye. I'm Devnit of Clan Brokvar. Let us on. Hey. We can pay our passage. He just goes over and immediately throws them down, the gangplank down, roughly as he's looking about, very nervous. And Devnit grins. Oh, this is some luck. And she turns around. Harry, Jute, Harry. Jute quickly follows behind them, bringing up the rear, making sure none of them have made it past the Witcher and towards the death. Oyri uh, is going to look behind um, before getting on the ship. Is is uh, Dryden anywhere 
to be seen. You do not see him. Should, should we should we wait on Dryden? I don't know. He doesn't exactly give us the impression he wanted to come with us. If he sees us get on the ship, no doubt he'll uh, do what he can to save his own hide. Yeah, and he's darn good, good at it. But what if he's not darn good at it this time? Well, then he'll be dead, and he died nobly saving us. He's a witcher. Oh, he turns Oiri. around and sternly points a finger at Jute, but doesn't say anything. She just kind of, like, you know, has that kind of, like, you're right, but I don't like it. Uh, Dev puts her hand on Irie's shoulder. It's what he wanted. Yeah. That man, he's not good with words. But I think that he wanted to tell you something with his actions. Yeah. Don't worry, Irie. I set him up, set him up with contracts for years. He's fine enough. You should have seen some of the heads he's brought back. I There's doubt all... he'll have a problem. Everyone's fine until they're not. <laughs> Ramsey, or... I, I know that quite well, but it doesn't mean he will be in my condition. Ramsey just because interjects. it happened to me. All right, can I uh, raise the gangplank just in case one of those monsters decides to get on the ship? We don't have to leave, but... Yes. I, 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 I get one with... He walks are you waiting for uh, any other crewmen? Because I doubt they're still alive. I, I will. It's hard to... hard to fly a ship this... With one person this size, uh, well, it's just the you. The rest of the clansmen. Oh, they went aboard. I was on watch. They were out drinking. For fuck's sake, damn it! Well, my friends hurt, and none of us are sailors. But I know my way around the ship, and uh, my friend over there, he's strong. And well, Iris, she's a fast learner. So you tell us what to do, and we'll get this ship going. Well, hell, if there's any clansmen left down in town, I'd like to at least have a look about for them before those things come back. All we found were dead bodies. Well, that doesn't mean I have any tucked away. You want to go back? That's one thing with Dryden, all right? But clansmen, if there's anyone left, we owe them that much, at least I'd take a small look. Mm, Besides, you don't have to go far. Is this guy wearing any clan sigils of exactly where he's from on Skeleta? Skeleta? No, he's shirtless. Temp typical sailor, really. Sav. I... We can wait a bit, but going back on shore, that's suicide. Mm. If, I... if anyone was there, they're... Either fled the town to the north with the rest of them, or they're dead. I mean, how long were we there before we were mopped? I suppose. But we can see quite far from here. So, we'll how about all out. give a shout? See if anyone gives a signal from any of the buildings there. Mm, that's not a bad idea. And he, uh, Heads kind of over this way by Jute and uh, heads up to this trebuchet. Uh, or not trebuchet, but uh, you get the idea. Scorpion. Yeah. Um, and he kind of uh, nudges it with his foot at a bit of an angle, so it's kind of towards a building as he uh, just brings a fist down, uh, sending the rope spiraling out um, and a huge bolt into one of the roofs, collapsing it. Well, that'll get it out of attention. There's a massive crash into the wall of this thing, bringing down the house, more or less. Rem's like, what are you doing? We might need that. For <laughs> what? Huh. There's been many rumors of the seas rising up. You haven't heard. Oh, you know, great. Exactly. I heard of what? Monsters. Sea monsters. For the fuck's sake. Well, I've not dealt with one in my life, and I've been about it for quite a while. This is madness. Heads over towards the side and looks out for anyone that's kind of 
you know, in vain, probably, but you do, you out do see already. some someone uh, making their way towards the boat. Yeah, Is Travis it waves out? Hey, who goes? There's no reply. You got a spyglass, Ramsey. Oh, yes, yes. He runs and grabs it and brings it back to you as quickly as he can. Yeah, she raises it to her eye and goes to the edge of the ship, tries to get a good look at who's coming. Yeah, um, let's see. I'm gonna whisper to you. It's a golem. Uh, did did she manage to get the gangplank raised already? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely raised. Zavis kind of thinks about it for a moment and looks to the various scorpions, the tributaries, what have you. Uh, kind of turns to Ramsey. How many of those things do you think are in town? I saw dozens. Dozens? Dozens? Are you joking? No. They all, most of them went to the north. Damn it. Or the south, I mean. They're, they're all over the place, I'm sorry, it's just... I don't know what those things are. Never seen anything like that. Some kind of monster. Damn it, it doesn't matter now, though. If too many of those things are about, no one will be able to get aboard anyway. Jute kind of looks to Ramsey. It's time to go. Bye. Oiri is going to... Oh, sorry. Um, oh. Oiri is going to roll up her sleeves and look over at uh, Devnet and Ramsey. Alright, so uh, I guess we're going to have to man this. Uh, what do I need to... Well, um, it's been quite a while since I've been on a ship, but... Ramsey is captain. That's the first thing I need to know. And he'll be telling you what you need to do. On a ship, that's the most important thing. You know who to listen to. Hey. He scratches his head. I'm just the bolt swing. No. Now you're the captain. So, the gang planks up. Uh, we weigh an anchor. And... and tell us what to do. He looks nervous for a moment. Um, can somebody Zavis. give me a lead? Is lead? I think leadership is a skill. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Zavis heads over it and kind of I gives him a hearty go. pat on the back. Hey, yeah, Jude's probably got it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Where is that? I think yeah, that's. Uh, under... It's under empathy. Yeah. It's under what? Empathy. Empathy. You're, oh, you're yeah. kind of muffled there, uh, Walter Peck. Oh, sorry, let me give it a try here. I have zero leadership, so... Yeah, Zavis can roll as well. If we want. That's pretty good. Mm. How do you Deuce, inspire Deuce this guy? Man. <laughs> he gets up to him, and like many people in battle who have a moment's hesitation, Jute starts barking orders at him and getting him to focus and not pay attention to what's going on land, and just bury himself in the details of getting the the boat ready to sail. Yeah, he starts... At first he seems kind of cowed by it, but then he straightens his back and begins telling everybody what they need to do. He sizes people up and gives them tasks based on what they probably can do, based on their physical bearing. Um, he mans the wheel as you begin to sail out into the um, into the sea um, with uh, probably Dev um, raising the uh, sail climbing with one hand actually and uh, doing it all <laughs> oh, she... um, uh, she's good enough she can do it <laughs> could Ayuri help with that? <laughs> Yeah, you, you right. all help in certain ways um, okay. to get the sail up and the anchor pulled up and whatnot. Yeah, Zav is already probably doing more than he should, uh, going about making sure everything's all 
in order, tying down knots and everything, and making sure shit is uh, all in place where it needs to be. Yeah, you you sail away from the shore, and you're well out. Um, or give me an awareness check. Awareness. <laughs> Oh, hi. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna, I'll whisper you something. You see well. Probably a well, you... mile offshore now. Right. Oyeri is, is going to kind of fixate on the the shoreline, um, basically watching a scene out on shore of uh, Dryden fighting off completely surrounded by golems and that's that's all she's really looking at she'll she'll still help out but she'll she'll definitely keep her eye to the shore until they cannot see any any shore at all yeah you're you're just as you're looking at that only a few moments later everything is um pretty blurry from the distance you can't make anything out after a while Oire, she says, catching Iri, you know, kind of a rope in her hand, just hanging limply, not doing anything but staring at the shore for a moment. Oire jumps and, uh, right, uh, sorry, uh, she'll, she'll get back to work, but not really say anything. Dev watches her with some concern, but... There's nothing to be done about it. Um, pretty soon, I think they're all probably busy with the matters of the show. Yeah, Silas heads about. Uh, again, still keeping things in check. Uh, after a while, when they're quite at sea and pretty much everything's in order for the most part, he kind of heads up up by now Captain Ramsey. Uh, yeah, he's at the wheel. Well then... Things are looking like they're in place well enough. I take it you know the way well. Oh, like the back of my hand, I've done this trip oh, two dozen times, perhaps. <laughs> Lovely. It's been a while since I made the trip home. Oh, it has been not so long for me. Things are quite mm. strange back on Skellige. Oh, really? Are you sure? Oh, the clans, some are in open... open war with one another. What do you mean? What the hell happened? They send the clans to war? Oh, there's many bigger rumors. Bigger things to worry about. Assassinations? Dark magics? I don't really know. I'm just a sailor. Oh, for fuck's sake. Really? What clan are you? By the way, Ramsey. Oh, I'm of Clan Drummond. And he uh, kind of gives him a pat on the shoulder, and I want to make him take his hand off the wheel. I well, I am of uh, Brokvar. Same with Dev down there. You looking to go Tell to me. Spagrog then? Hey, hey, indeed. That'd be lovely. Good as place as any. Mm. Best fighting pit around and decent taverns enough. Well, I am certainly grateful that these monstrosities can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I'd be damned if they did. 
I did see one did it, come number. towards the ship, walked straight into the water, and didn't see him again. Right. Well, yeah, that's good. Uh, life's always a peaceful trip. He kind of uh, looks down in, in a wince of pain as he has been quite active, and there's a slight reddening in his bandages. Oh, for fuck's sake. How are these going to kill me when I have to make out to change these? Hmm. Been injured by one of those things, huh? Aye, and a couple of rowdy sailors before that. Well, I call them sailors. Pirates. We were trying to get a ship home and, well, you know, it can be with some pirates. Oi. Well, the captain's chamber is quite open. I'm going to be on the wheel for a while. I might have the one-armed lass take over if she's been on a ship before. Oi, oi. Both of us have. I'm now experienced with uh, man in a ship quite. I've been close enough to him in my life. Mm, well, I navigate by the stars. I can give which star to point the wheel at and... Hopefully we'll stay on course. I'll need to sleep yeah. at some point. Right, we should do it in shifts then, I suppose. Ah, oh, lovely. Clever captain you are, Ramsey. <laughs> and he gives him another slap on the back before he uh, goes heading towards the stairs again. Well, if you don't mind, I think I might take the first shift. Have these bandage changes. Uh, changed. Yeah, he just nods and leans against the wheel. Yeah, his head's down. So, how are you feeling at home in the water? Uh, uh, to be honest, this is my first time on a, on the, the ocean. Really? Right. Go to see. Uh, the water can be a bit unsettling at times, but as long as it's done a storm, I think we'll be happy. Ori, why don't okay. you give me a stun save? <laughs> Juice, oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> over the rail. I love it. Dev just takes one a on deep this. breath. Oh, isn't it glorious, Ori? Ugh, do kind of. Where's? Uh, if you you can do it off uh, your token. If you do it, it's in the combat menu. Yeah, combat menu. Oh, okay. It's a stun plus death, I think. So. She looks a little green around the gills, Deb. Oh no, she's sickness. fine. Oh, <laughs> she is fine. Yeah, it doesn't bother you. You actually um, feel quite good. This, you feel like the spray of the sea on your face. It's almost liberating. Everyone loves a good liberating spray on the face. There's something. I, I don't know, it, it just, it does feel a bit ad adventurous. Aye, <laughs> perhaps you've got some skeleton blood in you somewhere. <laughs> uh, you never know. <sighs> I'll be glad to be back to speaker there, it's been a while. Mm, hit the taverns. Aye, aye. I swear, there's really nothing quite like Skelligan women. <laughs> kind of uh, glances at Dev before he looks out over the sea again. The uh, land kind of <laughs> fading off in the distance. Oiri smiles over at Devnet and Zavis, but then her smile fades as soon as she sees the red stained bandages. <laughs> well, it looks like exactly what I said would happen has happened. Ah, well, I don't think they tore. Yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. It's just a bit of a leak here. And a bit of a sting here and there. It's because your stitches likely to have torn. Let's go take a look at it. No. Right. Our limbs mentioned that the captain's quarters are comfortable enough. And uh, I think we best uh, sleep in shifts. Just in case. Shift? Uh, how, how come? Well, someone has to steer the ship, unless we want to just let it go about its way. Oh, uh, right. Uh, I I don't know much about ship. 
well, it's best to be rested in case something happens and say a storm comes along. We'll have to make sure the sails are up or down as needed, all that. Dev is looking at the bandage and the blood on it. She, her eyebrows are furrowed. Oh, is right. Get down there so she can see to it. We did what we had to do, but now you need to rest. Aye, aye, and he kind of heads this way. And he calls up to Ramsey. I don't suppose you have any alcohol in there. You'd mind me having a bit of... Oh, we have plenty of grog. There's only five of us. The ship usually mans 16. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Finally, to... some good news. <laughs> he swings open the door to the captain's quarters and heads on in. Oyri comes in after him. And, uh... She'll, she'll get right to work. Uh, pull out a fresh set of bandages. Uh... Make sure that um, she can clean off uh, the blood that's um, on his, you know, f from his wound. Make sure that nothing's popped um, after she's taken off the, the dirty bandages. And then she'll just, you know, clean it up, put them back, uh, a new fresh set of bandages back on. Yeah, you, you're able to change his bandage, fix a couple stitches that popped. Um, I would like somebody to give me a 1d5 roll. Oh, dibs. Okay. <laughs> I roll the best rolls. Oh, uh, boy. Well, gonna be two. a fucking five. Oh, boy. While those two are inside. What? Yeah, go, go ahead, Juice. What? Uh, while those two are inside, Juice kind of leaning over the rails and looking out of the water and looks to Deb and goes, Tell me, how well do you trust Irie? Oh, that girl. If there is anyone worth trusting in this world, uh, besides Zav, uh, it's her. She's not got an ounce of guile in her. Hmm, you sure? I'm certain. I can't... You have any reason not to trust her? Hmm. We'll see. He kind of lets it go at that. She frowns at that. It seems like she's about to push him farther, but then she just shrugs. So it looks like uh, you found me just in time. Wonder what would be happening right now if any of us would be alive if you hadn't. Possibly all of us killed by golems if we'd made it through those... Uh, Pirates. Ju kind of gives her a look and looks at her missing arm and kind of chuckles. And looks like I was a little late. She just punches him in the shoulder. <clears throat> this was the sacrifice I was willing to make. It was my own choice. Well, it was my choice to risk it anyway. And it was worth it. Mm. Jude kind of shrugs non-committally at that answer. Not 100% sold on losing an arm was worth it, but um, he doesn't mention much. He Instead, Skellica, open rebellion, clans fighting. For a mercenary like me, that sounds like a, a good opportunity. Yeah, well, you just make sure you're on the right side, she says, and cocks an eyebrow. Oh, I think I'll manage. I've been in Skellige before. Not the islands, mind you. Well, uh... <clears throat> there's no better fighting force than Clan Brokvar. Well, we're known for our bowmen anyway, and, uh... I think if you... Look at it that way. It's usually the folk that can hit you from far away that are the end up the winners. I do like picking sides as a winner. And it'd be a shame if I had to kill you. Oh, you don't have the heart for that. 
she just kind of quirks a smile to one side. Pray that you never have to find out. She kind of laughs and looks around and let's go find some grog. Oh, that sounds like a fine idea. You get some grog. Um, before everybody falls asleep, Ramsey kind of explains how to navigate the ship. He claims it's very easy. Simply point at that star, and uh, there is a bright star in the sky that he points out. Um, everybody is able to do this uh, with not too much trouble. Uh, you're not 100% sure um, that you're going the right way always, but um, on the last uh, the last uh, person on the wheel is Jute. At probably 4 or 5 a.m. The ship, you just feel a lurch to a... just like violently lurch. And the... Um, the seas are completely calm. There is no, almost no wind, a, a pleasant breeze, no rain, no clouds. But suddenly the ship lurches to the side. Everyone uh, in their bunks or in the bed like rolls out violently. You hear Jute from the behind the wheel holler out, "Get up here! Get up here now! Something's wrong, Ramsey." Get up here. It takes a while uh, before Ramsey's up on deck. He's rubbing his head. Likely your yelling out wasn't the reason why he came up, but instead just because of the violent motion. He's, you Jude. see him just looking around. And Dev like... staggers up too points to whatever side he felt the boat kind of like impact or rocked on and goes, I don't understand. We've hit something. Zavis kind of clambers out of the cabin. The fuck is going on? For fuck's sake. We're in the middle of the sea. There's... It's impossible to hit anything here. Uh, trust... What about those monsters? It's too oh, deep. Nonsense. Yeah, well, he said that there was monsters out in the, the ocean, right? You think we managed to nab a whale or something? Is the sun up yet? No, it's like 5 a.m. Yeah, Zavis heads over and kind of gets a view off the side, looking down, thinking maybe there's a whale or something. Or Yeah, something. Oyuri's going to look out on the water, too. Dude's kind of annoyed. He's like, don't look at me. I'm not a fucking sailor. Yeah, I think we're all probably looking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone falls overboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you're looking overboard, um, yeah, you you like the way um, the side you guys are on uh, was the side that went up, right? And the other side dipped. Um, so, uh, you're kind of sitting there, um, and everybody's just kind of looking over, and you see these tentacles just come up and like latch on to the rail and just rip them off the boat completely. Ramsey screams in horror as this huge mouth pops up out of the water with hundreds and hundreds of teeth. Boyery screams and steps back. Yeah, Zavis's mouth is agape as he starts stepping away from the side of the ship. Uh, for fuck's sake. The world is out to kill us. God damn it. <laughs> How and do you do uh, that? He starts looking around. Find Get a fucking battle. <laughs> and he starts rushing over right. to find a suitably sized barrel. Okay, let's yeah. roll initiative. Ugh. You could, I, Does Irie know how to use these things because they're like crossbow-ish? I would probably make that a warfare roll. Mm. Alrighty. Um, what was the five for? Was that uh, to shoot one of the uh, 
ballistas or scorpions or whatever you need to work or is that right? I, I think so. What was that? What did you say, Aki? A list of that was what it was. Um, uh, I was asking what the five was for. I wasn't sure if he did healing rate or anything like that. Or five. Since he's done the rest. What? Oh, yeah. You, the yeah, one you, five. you would get... Um, oh, the five was who was on watch when this happened. Oh, okay. Um, uh, you would get... Uh, yeah, you're going to get your wound threshold back. So that's another eight. So you'll Yay. get 18. <laughs> so much better. <laughs> still, uh, still I'm not great. Way up. Uh, I, I mean, it's pretty good. My, a lot of people have like 20. Oh, Rothmere, for instance, has 15. Yeah. That says 40 <laughs> once he's max. Dev, what would you That's like to do? That's why it was so scary when he went down. Um, so when you say warfare, did you mean tactics? Uh, yes. Uh, well, is it... Um... I just, I'm sorry, just got a thousand systems in my head. Whatever the right. <laughs> role is for that. Should be Isn't there a siege thing. thing or something? There is. I'm looking. Uh, I thought there was. I don't think it, see anything for it. I guess not. Anything. Yeah, I don't no, think there's anything for intelligence. Siege. I think it's just tactics. I think that's the all-encompassing... Uh, military skill. thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah warfare slash military. Yeah, I would do tactics. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh boy <clears throat> so it's over there and it's got tentacles is yeah, what we like know four tentacles are on the side of the ship um like up on the top where yep. they can be hit yep you can okay. you could definitely uh chop at them yeah she's gonna pull out the silver sword and she'll take a chop at a tentacle technically okay. fumble you don't get crits against monsters right yeah you can get crits against monsters so did she crit him uh absolutely um mm -hmm. that's 20 so nice. he... plus the fumble yeah well yeah that's i mean uh, yeah he can't go below yeah. one so um so it's a 19, so oh, it's a man. difficult critical. Um, Sweet. At least. Um, it's probably more than that, actually. That's a deadly critical. Uh, so it takes 10 damage right off the top. Very nice. Um, what's a... Uh... Yeah, so that's the most you can do on that. So it cuts off the tentacle. How does that look like? Um, Dev had come running on deck, um, a part of her still, you know, giving a little bit of credibility to the story about sea monsters, so she had brought the silver sword, and as everybody's backing up, she pulls it out and mutters to herself, it's time to find out if this silver sword does anything, and she just brings it down, you know, an overhand strike right on the tentacle. And it slices through it like butter, and it falls back onto the deck, kind of writhing and squiggling, spurting whatever black ichor is coming from it. Yeah, Ramsey, he, he, uh, oh, actually, you can go try to go again if you would like. With yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, uh, do I have to move to reach another tentacle? Yeah, so you can't do like a quick attack on it, but you can do another one. Okay. Uh, I will do that. Okay. okay, so basically move over here and do a uh, minus three one. Go. Yep. You got this. Don't fumble. <laughs> oh, why would you say that? <laughs> I love it. I love doing that. It's the worst. Uh, Says Mr. Perfect Rolls. Oh my gosh. Go. Nice. Wait, it. I put it was an extra attack. Did it? Yeah, it did. It took off yeah, the next. Yeah, it took off the three. Sweet. Just rolled like a baller. But... 
Oh, I forget it has the extra 10 damage and shit. Oh, man. So 15. That cuts off another one. Very nice. Yeah, with a... She just leaps forward and with another overhand strike, cuts through another tentacle, and it again is left squirming on the deck, and she kind of bares her teeth and uh, says, Who's the witcher now? <laughs> Zavis on the back looks quite surprised, just like staring unbelievably at these giant fucking tentacles writhing all over the deck as he uh, kind of starts looking over towards one of the trebuchets now, rethinking his whole get in a barrel and just hope you live <laughs> yeah, Ramsey runs. It up. saved him in his childhood. Yeah. Ramsey <laughs> runs over to the uh, the wheel and tries to begin to turn it away um, when he gets there, but it's slow moving. The Kraken, um, it's a another tentacle comes flying out of the water, uh, swinging at Dev. Oh no. Much smaller. It's a minus ten. Oh my god! What? Well, it had a minus. It has a minus ten modifier. And it it had a minus one. ten, but it fumbled. Oh, yeah. Oh it did gosh. get a one base. It impales oh, shit. We win. Do I get a free attack for it fumbling? No. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> exactly zero. <laughs> Yeah, oh no. Uh, I'll just take the miss. Yeah, it just slams <laughs> it <good>. slams <laughs> into the... Uh... I mean, yeah. <laughs> Not getting hit is good. Yeah, maybe take the miss. Yeah. <laughs> so it misses, uh, slamming it into the, the rail, just wood goes flying everywhere. But another tentacle comes up. Or actually, I'm going to actually use the ten one of the other tentacles that are on board. And it pulls the ship. I would like everybody to make Ooh. a... Ooh. Um, That's probably good. a dodge roll is fine. Dodge. Athletics, athletics or dodge. I'll let you guys choose. Oh, just better. Yeah, better go look at my athletics. Right. I think it's the same for me. Oh no, my dodge is slightly better. I like one ish. Oh no, poor boy, he's hurt so bad. <laughs> at least you're nowhere near the edge. <laughs> Oh no! Um, okay. Let me roll fumble real quick. Ah, uh, you should have gotten that barrel. Where's the fumble thing? Just roll a d10. Okay, yeah. So I got like a four. Um, <laughs> so you move. You got a four, you got an eleven. Uh, you move seven yards closer to the edge on his side. So if you want to, yeah, it's like, so, yeah, like, like there. Yeah. Uh, anybody else get lower than a uh, eleven? I think so. I forgot exactly. I was right. Yeah, I know, right? Jute, did you roll? I did. I got a 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it, it pulls on the ship, and Zavis, you just kind of roll into a ball towards the thing. Um, but everybody else is able to grab a hold of things so they don't go flying forward. Yeah, there's a groat of pain as he kind of catches himself along the railing there, just about not going down into the stairs. Um, oh, you read. Oyuri does the instinctive mom hand out thing. <laughs> <laughs> like in the car without Love a seatbelt? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zavis, of course, uh, missing her uh, expectation is actually a little bit shorter than uh, yeah. <laughs> reached for, like instinctively, as he kind of almost rolls under, as he kind of keeps the momentum and uh, heads off towards this one, and he's going to try and turn it towards the thing. Uh I don't know if I can do that as my go or what. What? Sorry, what was that again? I want to launch the. Uh... Uh, yeah, you could. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. 
What would that be? Tactics, tactics 27 yeah, or? Tactics. Uh, is that the under the kind of? No. It would okay. be under uh, skill menu. Which is int, right? Intel. Yep. Int. Yeah. He uh, move, tries to move the thing over and kind of get it all set to launch. And yanks on the rope again. Okay. The ballista. That's why I would fucking keep thinking trebuchet, but it's ballista. Fuck. Okay, it hits. Go ahead and roll nice. me uh, 5d6. Very nice. Oh, very not nice. Butt rolls. And then go ahead and roll. Yeah, so um, let's roll for location. Uh, I think there's a hit location. There should on... be one in the combat menu, isn't there? I don't know, because it just, oh, no. just roll brass knuckles there's real not... quick. Just hit brass knuckles. Sure. Oh, uh, well, yeah, it would deal half damage if I... Yeah, it's going to be half damage. I guess technically this deals half damage as well. Yeah, this will be Just clicking damage. through real quick. Yeah. Um, it's torso. The torso, hey. so it hits a torso. Uh, the torso the face has... Uh, ten, so it does five damage to the torso. How does it look? Is it it kind of hits it and sticks in for a moment and then falls into the water. Yeah, Zavis turns the thing with a great bit of pained effort as he kind of drags at the wheels almost to get it in position as he finally uh, cranks the thing back and finally it launches this thing towards it, dipping in, really. For fuck's sake. If there's monsters about why don't you have silver heads on these fucking things? And he's just completely uh, awestruck by this whole situation. Um, I don't suppose you'd be able to do that a second turn. Or a second uh, I would say run. that's a full round action. That's what I would think too, yeah. Okay, hold on. I mean, fuck's sake, worst comes to worst. Javis, Zavis could just jump in the thing's mouth and beat it to death from the inside. <laughs> or, oh, please or don't. Or no, please don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably deal more damage, to be honest. <laughs> no. Rip its heart out from the inside. Please okay. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> or what would you like to do? Uh, like graboids. <laughs> Oyer, are you gaining her bearings and seeing Zavis go for the um, the the scorpion? She's uh, her immediate choice is basically just the tentacles in front of her, um, and. Uh, due to the situation, she doesn't have her crossbow. So, she's going to run up and use her her knight. There are several more of these. It would just take you time to get to one. Well, the... Yeah, it would take her time, and I think right now... I'm, I mean, there's this one right here. It, oh! Uh, between <laughs> two tentacles! Exactly! Right Right DevNet it. moves over politely. <laughs> <laughs> Please go ahead. <laughs> well, she has a dagger. I, I apologize. Anyway, it's just it's. She's going to try to slice through, um, the tentacle. Of course, I'm assuming that it's rather big and oh, chunky. Oh, it's it's so... you know, yeah, it's huge. But. Mm -hmm. Even with any sort of cut, it can still hurt enough for it to go, ooh, and, and you know, record, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Don't say, ooh, when there's tentacles around, please. <laughs> <laughs> this could okay. be a hentai version of the Witcher. <laughs> oh, God. We all know oh, that's geez. probably a thing somewhere. Don't make us think about it. It is the two ladies who are close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it's true. If you think it, it exists somewhere. <laughs> well, I have never done a a dagger attack. Oh my! It, sh it should be it should be in your. <laughs> um, uh, does it matter if I do a fast strike? A fast uh, strike, fast strike that... would be what you're doing, yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean it's up to you. If you the, uh, strong strikes do more damage, but they're a little um, penalized. Yeah. Um. But you gotta think right, this thing is uh, gonna. You're going to only do half damage to it, regardless, because... So, it says target... Yeah, it says target location. You just say I mean, it's a tentacle. Uh, you just say random, that's fine. Okay. You got this. Hey! 
You have you have the bleed skill, right? No. Uh -uh. You should have it baseline. Um. Well, I didn't use that. Oh, true. I think I would have. Oh, you know, I do have. I do have three in it. Oh, I should. Mm -hmm. I should have used that. You did hit. <laughs> you got another attack. So, um. Okay, so that's uh, difficult. Look. Very nice. No, that's simple. Um, but it takes three damage. From that. Next round, I'll do bleeding. And then three damage. Uh, you're gonna do um, no no damage other than that. Yeah, you it, the this whatever the skin or blubber is, it's just so tough you can barely get through it. Um, you oh can boy. attack again, though. That was a fast strike, so you can attack again. Can I use? Yeah, can I use bleeding wound? Uh, not this time. You you get to finish your fast attack, so it's got to be two normal attacks. Then you could spend stamina oh, yeah. to do your bleeding. So, oh, so just go ahead okay. and give me another attack. Oh wait, it does say um, Doctor Who does damage with the bladed weapon can make a bleeding wound roll. Um, Against DC of 15. Oh. Oh, so roll it. Roll the professional skill and see if you get a 15. Yeah, so it's just you can roll it after damage. Oh, okay. So I, I do damage and then I roll for the bleeding wound. Yeah, so I think it's not enough to deal any. Because it's um, uh, bleeding at one point per two points over the DC. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't still, do it. That's nice. Yeah, oh, it's good to know. Yep. So I make another attack. Yep, then? just make another normal attack. God, that's strong. That's very nice. You got this. Do it. Hey. Ooh. She's got pretty good small blades. <laughs> Oh man. That's five damage just straight off the top. Very nice. Now, for, do I do points. another bleeding yeah, wound? Mm -hmm. Sick. There you go. That's more like That's it. six. That's three bleed. It's going to have to stop and do first aid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a DC 21, too. <laughs> That's pretty sick, though. I don't see the bleed marker, but I put it on there. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so it is, oh, I do. It is quote unquote bleeding. Um, would you like to spin stamina and attack again? Um. You have thirty stamina, and it costs three. Too. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I was about to ask how much stamina. Yeah, just does three. It take, um, yeah. And then it'll ask you if it's an extra attack on when you roll your attacks again. Just say yes. It should give you a negative three. Mm. Okay. Cool. Jeff's gonna have to put points into tactics after this. <laughs> <laughs> the extra action, yes. Nice. A bit lower. Oh, man, yeah, he rolled real low. And that's a critical for that's three something. damage. Uh, that cuts off one of the arms. How does that look? Oh. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> so Ayuri, uh, she she does her first stab, and it it doesn't look like it does much. Then it, it seems like she's kind of getting, you know, into defeating this monster, uh, partially fueled by fear of the beastly thing. Second stab goes in, and, and it starts bleeding pretty bad, and she's just it, with a a big outcry, and she just stabs right through in slices and this big floppy tentacle just breaks apart and flops 
uh, over limply to to her side. Uh, okay, Jute, you're up. First quick question. Luck is um, Luck. rejuvenated at GM to scratch. Yeah, after, after the session, usually. And so I can say um, aim for its mouth that would qualify it as its You can't reach its the, mouth. With the ballast. You, you can. Oh, with, with the, the ballast, with the, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So basically, he's been, while Dev and Irie and Davis have been distracting it. Jute has slowly been lining up uh, the ballast to the aim for its head. Yes, Got it. do it. And I'm going to use all six of my luck to cancel out the minus six on an aim headshot. Nice. No fumble, no fumble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's fucked now. <laughs> Pat Ramsey's butt. Yeah, don't don't shoot it straight into the deck. Oh my God, could you imagine? No my. <laughs> the ship starts sinking. If it was hey, oily, that's go. what it would be. <laughs> yes. So nice. it's a hit. Um, it is a critical, so he's gonna take three damage immediately. Uh, go ahead and roll five d six. 20. Very nice. Uh, so that does 5 damage. Well, it triples, doesn't it, for an aimed headshot? Oh, true. Or for head. With... I mean, technically it would, but it's more like it's torso. Well, that's why it's aiming for its head. That yeah, so I'll give you 6 if more it... on the critical. Um, it doesn't really have a head. So I'll give your luck a six yeah, more. Yeah, some of the monsters don't have certain hit point hit So spots, if actually. you were, if you rolled a twenty five and here, so it's a fifteen. I see. I think that's uh. <clears throat> yeah, I wasn't exact. I didn't know if the mouse would qualify as a headshot. Yeah, no, I hear you. So, <laughs> but he takes seven more damage. Um, from that. Um, the 20 damage, he takes 5. Yeah, um, it just goes into its mouth. You, It just, like, disappears. But all of a sudden, the tentacles let go of the side of the ship, and the thing just dives into the water. <clears throat> There's no attack of opportunity in this game, is there? I mean, you could cut <laughs> off its tentacle if you wanted but it would the thing oh, heck yeah <laughs> yeah you you slice off however you want to say that but it the the body of the thing just dives into the water jute uh being cavalier uh after shooting it in the mouth as and it slides back into the water he puts a a foot up on the um board there overlooking the deck and goes I know, I know. You can shower me with your praises whenever you want. Yes, Samus, meanwhile, at the other at the other ballista, for fuck's sake, where'd it go? <laughs> He's scanning the whole area looking for the thing and, like, still panicked, concerned that there might be more. Juke points to the water. It's in the water. It is clearly dead. <laughs> Dev, uh, kind of shouts, uh, like with victory for victory, you know, waving her sword in the air, and then she turns to Irie. I didn't know you had it in you, girl. Well, I was just uh, overcome with uh, this adrenaline rush. Uh, she pats her on the shoulder. Well, you did well. One of these is a trophy for you to take home. She says, kicking the <laughs> squirming tentacles that are on the deck. Yeah, the water's quiet as Avis finally hopes that that's the last Kraken they have to deal with as he kind of heads back over. For fuck's sake. You know, I'd always hope that all the stories about Krakens and all that shit was just fucking bollocks. Damn it. Well, Why do people sail if there's stuff in the ocean like this? Ah, I've sailed Actually, many times. Stupid enough to attack a ship. Oh, I've never had something like this happen. 
I mean, clearly they're not that dangerous. Look how easily we handled them. <sighs> well, she holds up the silver sword to the moonlight. Uh, never had one of these before, and uh, I can see why the witchers like them. Hey, for fuck's sake, you have to get me one. Damn. Nah. Let's uh, maybe melt one down and uh, paint your <laughs> knuckles with it. Oh, now that's an idea. Fuck, hell. He kind of looks back over the side a bit cautiously. We're lucky it didn't punch a damn hole in the thing. Wairi uh, is looking at her dagger um, and she wipes it off. Why do I ever use anything but this? She says to herself. <laughs> Samus kind of looks at her an eyebrow up. I do fucking know, Lash. But please keep using that. Hey, she's got a taste for it now. I can see it. She kind of looks to Ramsey. Why don't you go below deck and make sure we're not taking on any water? He nods um, and he scuttles off to do so. Zavis kind of Oh, fuck. And he kind of sits down there next to the side of the ship. Looks over the three or four tentacles even uh, that are now. Oyeri's trying to... Moving across here. <laughs> Oyeri's trying to toss one of the tentacles off. She's picking it up and, and kind oh, of... don't toss it! Why? We don't know. Maybe we can fucking eat it. Are you want to eat this? Ah, uh, we've got plenty on board the ship. Uh, but have you been ever been able to tell people a story of you eating a fucking kraken? Is it safe to eat? Yeah, they'll tell it we'll find out, eh? when they say this dumb bastard ate a kraken. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a story worth telling, isn't it? <laughs> On a headstone, perhaps. Oh, uh, here, lies, <laughs> here lies Zavis. He ate a kraken. Ate a fucking kraken. I'd be the talk of the town. <laughs> I don't fucking know. We I should mean, put these sweat. in a chest so people know that we're not just telling tales when we get to Svorlog. Hey, keep one of them. Eat the rest. <laughs> uh, I mean, if I it don't... tastes like octopus, I'm sure it's quite good. It's not gonna keep for a week. Uh, well, I mean, we don't have to have it keep. We just have to it's... show it to people. It's going to be quite disgusting. Mm. Hey, <laughs> all the better of the story. People will really believe us then. Can't deny and your it'll nose, smell. can you? And it'll have disease. Will Listen it? to the doctor. Yeah, Zavis uh, kind of takes out a little, a small little knife used for like food and stuff and starts cutting a pretty big chunk out of the thing slowly. It's tough, so it's like taking ages. He's like sawing away at the thing practically. I'm gonna make a fucking stew with it if I can. Don't eat it raw. Yo, oh, hey, I'm not gonna do that. But still, cracking me. Still a story to tell. <sighs> It'll be a good one. Assuming hey. we make it without uh, attracting any more of those things. Hey. Besides, if you're to believe it, I mean, you know what they say about seafood? seafood? Gives you what? a bit of vigor. <laughs> Is that what they say? Oh, hey. Well, you've never been uh, offered clams by a lovely looking lamb. Some men don't eat seed food or need it for vigor. <laughs> uh, you can have... always use more. Um, I've had fish, but uh, not clams. Uh, what was the big one? I think it was oysters, was it? It's been a while. Something like that. Uh, uh, turtles. You ever find a turtle, make a soup of it, it's supposed to be, uh, well, a right awakening if you get my drift. Not sure that's my cup of tea. No, it'd be a soup. <laughs> you don't eat soup in a cup of tea, do you? <sighs> saws away at the thing, laughing to himself. Finally gets a 
what almost resembles a steak out of it. Uh, it starts cutting for more. Dev just shakes her head, looks up um, out across the side of the boat, sees the sun starting to barely peak. I feel better when the sun's up, though. I somehow think that um, they're just less likely to be trouble then. Well, at least see it coming, maybe? <laughs> Do we ever see it coming, Irie? No. Definitely not. This was just the first night. Aye. Right. But I now we like know what to expect. On the way there. <laughs> Maybe it'll tell its friends we're not to be fucked with. Certainly hope so. Well, I thought he was dead. Yeah, it's not dead? I really doubt that. Oh, it's dead. I made sure. <laughs> Dev sh shrugs. As long as it doesn't come back, I don't care if it's dead or alive. My. You, um. You know, I wonder if this would make good chum. <laughs> he continues to saw away at it, tossing some into a bucket. Yeah, Zava spends the next couple days making tentacle stew and such. Um, it's very similar similar to eel, uh, octopus, things like that. Um, the After that incident, the days pass fairly um, routinely. Uh, Zavis continues to feel better as the open sea, there's not a whole lot to do. Um, Ramsey takes care of most things, uh, like uh, with the sail itself, uh, and everybody else just uh, navigates the wheel. Eventually, you see in the distance the islands. Um, you pass uh, a couple heading to Spikerog, and in the distance you see your uh, home of Clan Volkvar, and the sun high above it. Um, and that's where we're going to end it for tonight. Uh, Yo! <laughs> Yay! <laughs>